perfect, so perfect. I, ASEAN. I think it's easy, but you know. Let's let's just start with that, right? Because I know that um is is Asia Bryant is that your birth name? So ASEAN is actually my birth name. Oh. Um, I changed it to Asia because when I was fifteen, I was an artist as well, and I had music out playing on the radio in the Carolinas, but no one could pronounce my name. And I, of course, like social media was popping then, or around really. Um, so there was no way I could really tell every radio director all over how to say my name until I went in and did an interview. So we were like, yo, this is going nuts. We have to do something about this. So in school, my teachers called me Asia, like, because when they would get to my name, they're like, um, last name Brian, <laughs> so they say a whole bunch of other pronunciations of it. And it's like, nah, it's none of those. So just call me Asia. So I don't even, don't need the trip. Mm. So. Since I was already doing that, I was like, okay, let's just go with Asia Bryant and then just make it easy on everybody. But that was a pat <laughs> life, I feel like. What inspired you to change it, you know, back to your, I guess not change it back, but, you know, go to your original name and, and your birth name. Why the why the change now? Well, um, when, I, when I was 15, I was under another label. And then I, I didn't really know who I was. You know, I'm a child at that age, mm-hmm. and, you know. I was just trying to figure myself out, figure out my sound. So when I came to the point of putting out my last EP, Love Train, I had gotten into the fake. I knew exactly who I was. And, mm. you know, I didn't want to hide behind the moniker of the Asia Bryant, the writer, because that's a whole other entity in itself. And, and I wanted people to know me as the artist and exactly who I am. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going back to my actual name. Just this project is a clear indication of who I am and it's 100% me it might as well be my 100% real name wow. that's why I brought Ozzy on that wow that's that's fantastic what was the the mental process for you kind of um you know embracing that authenticity and and in you know going with your with your original birth name were there any mental changes that you kind of went through or had to go through in order to um you know, kind of present yourself to the world in, in this new, but, you know, original light? I mean, the only thing that I had to think about is this. I have so many fans with Asia now, and mm. people know me so much by Asia now. It's like, how do I get them to to recognize me as who, you know, Azian, which is my actual name. You know, my family, my whole family still calls me Azian, so, like, it was just a, a basis of getting my friends to start. Like, okay, y'all, listen, I know y'all been calling me Asia forever, so <laughs> let's stop. Okay, love you, mean it, but <laughs> I don't want you guys to introduce me to new people who don't know me as Asia, because that's going to, like, counteract the whole situation. Oh. So first I had to start with my friends, and then um, I did all my social media, and then people were like, I thought you got off social media. I'm like, no, it was so crazy, because when I put out Love Train, mm. people were like, you know, Yo, have you heard this new Aziondo? And I'm like, you do know that. That's me, right? Me, right? <laughs> Wow. to realize that's me. But it, it, it just gave me a first start as an artist, I feel like. And it gave me a first start to be able to create whatever I want and not be under Asia Brian and everything that I've accomplished while using the Asia Bryant name, if that makes sense. Mm. It does make sense. That's fantastic. So since you've kind of had this new go round, and I know that you've had a, a long history uh, as a writer, and like you said in the beginning, you kind of started as an artist, but since you has reappeared as as an artist. Can you talk to me about how that journey has, has been for you so far and, and how it's different now? It's been amazing, actually. Like, when I, when I put out Love Train, I just kind of, I got with um, Cardiac. Mm-hmm. He produced the whole thing. He produced my whole new album as well. But I met him working with Dr. Dre on the Compton album. Wow. And I was like, yo, I want to do, al- do a project, you know. And he was like, let's do it. Like, I, I, I don't do R&B and I want to do R&B. And I'm like, well, let's go. Let's do it. So <clears throat> I put it out solely by myself, independent, put it up in TuneCore, let it be distributed. I, I just, you know, promote it on my Instagram and my Twitter and then just dropped it based on my friends and the people who supported me and just us spreading the word. And the word of mouth is what caught that project on. And it showed me that people would accept me exactly as who I am and what I sound like and what is, you know, musically me. 
And mm-hmm. for me, it was just like a confirmation, like, okay, you've been successful in music when you were younger, you've been successful as a writer, but you can still be successful as an artist. And I feel like when I was writing, the only thing I lacked was that creativity to just be myself and do my own music and be on stage. And that that's really the core of where my heart is, really. So it, it's been amazing to be like, accept it like this the people are really be into the music like this and even now people are still like discovering my last EP while they're getting to know Nola my single that I have out now mm-hmm. and it, it's been really great do you approach the writing process any differently um, for your music than you do when you're writing for for others or you know collabing with others it kind of depends like um, if I'm writing just to attract for an artist I can, of course, I'm not here with the artist to ask them, you know, like, what's going on in your life? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, let's, let's just catch up. I know I'm a stranger, but, like, let's do this. Mm-hmm. So normally when I write with an artist, I'll talk to them in the middle, of, at the beginning of the session. I take, like, maybe 30 minutes to an hour to just, like, <laughs> really get to know them, know what they're going through in their lives, like, what's going on. So when I write for them, I'm being as authentic as possible to what their current reality is. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I do that, they perform the the music so much better because it's their real life and it's what they're going through. Now, when I'm creating for myself, I have nothing but real life to create about and my real authentic reality. So I think that's the difference. Like if I'm just writing to write, then I'm just being creative and just going off my head and and just being creative, you know? Absolutely. Is there anything that you do while you're writing that you like, that you need to have around you or like anything that you like you do in the studio or any sort of like, uh, like warm ups, like is there anything that you need to like that really creates the vibe for you while you're writing? I'm such a dark room writer and singer. <laughs> like when I'm um, in the studio recording, or even in my house, I have a studio in my in my house. So I I turn all the lights off. I have like these little mood lights in my house, and I just turn those colors on. I have like this little unicorn because I'm obsessed with unicorns that changes colors so, like slowly in a mood. <laughs> so like at home I just kind of do that but like in the studio I'll just set the move out I'll turn the lights down like I'll turn off the lights that make it feel like you're in an office because that's not the mood at all and I'm just like a dim lit like vibey writer and then I and then I lock in mm. I don't need any much more than that <laughs> just some dim light and uh some dope music wow so talking about the the newest single Nola, is that is that the way you pronounce it? Is it is it Nola? Nola. Nola. Okay, Nola. Like you're saying New Orleans. Yeah. Like you're saying New Orleans, but it's not it's not about New Orleans. And Absolutely. That was, that was that was kind of a play on words when I did that because when I started saying okay, the first thing is gonna be Nola. People are like, oh, New Orleans, you love New Orleans, and people get hype. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't correct them. I just let them think what they were saying. But um, I ended up calling it Nola because of how I was singing. Mm. <laughs> There ain't no love. Right. No love. No love in L.A. No love in L.A. I was cutting it off like while I was singing it. And it sounded like I was saying Nola like New Orleans. And that's that's why I actually named it Nola. Mm, what was the inspiration behind the the record? I love the record, by the way. It's it's super current, but I still hear like hints of, you know, authentic R&B in it, which, you know, I know that, you know, your roots you've been working for a long time. So you kind of have that you know, real genuine spirit of kind of like R&B, you know, in you. But I, I definitely hear the, the current sound in it as well. You know, what was kind of your inspiration behind the record? The inspiration behind the record was actually, um, okay, to tell you the inspiration for that record, we got to go back a little bit. Okay. So Lotre and the EP is basically a journey, like uh, um, a journey through a relationship, you know, in love, basically. And so in that, in, in the EP, we went from, you know, being out of a relationship with somebody, you're like, you know, fuck them, you know, forget them, whatever. I'd rather go be with some savages. Like, you know, <laughs> you, you know how it gets when you break up with somebody, you, you're not trying to be into them, but you're not being honest with yourself and, mm. and really being honest with the fact that you still love that person. At this point, anger and pain is what covers that up. Mm. So, look, with Love Train the EP, it unravels that. And it makes you get to the truth of what you feel. And then you get to the point where you're like, okay, well, I do still love this person. And um, I do want to give this another try, you know, and that type of stuff. And, and at the last song on that EP is lead. And, you know, you're letting that person take the lead. Like, you say you came, you say you want to do this again. Okay, I'll let you take the lead. So, with Love Train 2, the new album, um, 
I can't tell you where it starts. <laughs> but basically, it picks up where that where that album picks up. I mean, where that EP leaves off, mm. and we go through a whole another journey to complete to to. I don't even know where we're gonna go. Well, I know where we're gonna go. But you don't. I don't know where we're gonna go. Okay, fair enough. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. but so somewhere in that journey, I figure out that it's like, okay, well, shit, there. There's no love in LA, and even when I'm saying that, I mean it about the location, but then not even about the location, because there's so many people who feel like there's no love wherever they are. Mm-hmm. It's actually like wherever your heart was broken, wherever you've gone through this pain, or wherever you're in a place where it's a facade. Like I feel like when I first went to LA, it was like, oh, it's a beach, you know, unicorn rainbows, palm trees, and beaches, and just a whole bunch of awesome stuff, but. You don't really get the light shown on how many homeless people there are here and how many, like, the, the, the shady vibes and all of that stuff. And I feel like those things are everywhere, but, like, the homeless dynamic here is to a whole other parallel that mm. I've never experienced. And so I wanted to take, you know, my art and be able to showcase how, you know, there's a lot of rigid, broken people here in L.A. And it's, like, literally the city of Los Angeles. And then you have... You know, which part in the video I show show the homeless people, and I show I show so many different things that people don't actually see about LA. And then I'm actually talking about being heartbroken and not being able to find a genuine person because there's a lot of actors here. There's a lot of actors everywhere who mm-hmm. will, you know, portray to be one person, but then end up being a completely different person. And that's I feel like is the like what Nola encompasses like that's where it comes from how how have you navigated that having been in this industry for such a long time and when did you move out to, to la i've been i've been in la about four and a half years how have i navigated that well to be honest i'm a very energy driven mm. like i go off of energy and i'm very unapologetic about my peace of mind and my space and the energy that i allow into it so i think the way that i stay i stayed away from it well i definitely stay away from it now is that i feel like i have such a repellent around me against bs and people with bad energy that i don't even get them anymore mm. it's crazy but it's only because i feel like i manifest those things and i and i really pay attention to when someone is giving off the wrong vibe. Like, I'll work with certain people if you have bad energy, because it's that serious to me. And that's how I've been able to navigate and then still be successful, because there's still a lot of great people in L.A. There are still a lot of great people in the music industry, but there's also a lot of bad. And, uh, you know, it's like the pro and con, and you just have to really stand firm in what your beliefs are, and that's that's the way you do it, I feel like. Well, at least for me, I can't think for anybody else. Right. And has that been, like, it seems like it's been working for you or it's been helpful for you in kind of preserving that level of um, keeping you in a good, you know, mental headspace and, and, you know, preserving your sanity. Has it, has that worked out for you? Yeah. Okay. It's worked perfectly. <laughs> uh, I feel like uh, <laughs> it's, it's amazing what changing your mind will do. Like, um, I know that when I, before, before Love Train, um, before when I was just writing all the time, I felt like I was somewhat of a different person. And um, it took a heartbreak for me to find who I really was and really get into energy and really figure out what that meant. Yeah, it, it did keep me sane. It kept me very, it, it keeps me very sane. It keeps me very grounded because I'm aware that anything that happens in my life is based off of my choices and mm. the energies and the things that I allow. Mm. So when you know that, you can't do anything but keep hold yourself accountable. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and then check yourself at all points and make sure that you're not the one making something negative happen around you. Mm. And, and it really works. Wow. We really got deep. Now. Yeah, no, I, I I love it though, and it's important because I feel like a lot of the conversations, especially when you have like to me, writers and the producers are so important when it comes to you know what we hear, whether it's in on TV or YouTube, on the radio, and that sort of thing. But we never hear like behind the story and like just like their own thought process right. and so you know you're we're, we're privileged to be able to talk to you because you're not only an artist but you're a writer yourself so it's like double you know what's really kind of going behind you know how you preserve your, your mental sanity on, on a daily basis and in the last thing kind of you know on this topic because you know in america right now we're talking about mental health so much and how it's really affecting mm-hmm. you know people um 
I wanted to know for you personally, like on a daily basis, are there any things that you do or activities that you do to make sure that you are, you know, constantly staying in line with your right own, your own energy within and of yourself or, you know, making sure that, you know, you're good, you know, just kind of preserving yourself. What are some of the things that you do on a, you know, daily or weekly basis? Well, I, I do work a lot. Mm. <laughs> so, like, um, what I do like to do, I, I do pray. Okay. Daily. Multiple times a day. Actually, I'm like a cross tattooed on my hand. So every time I see it, I'm reminded to be grateful mm. for whatever the circumstances are. And um, and because I know that even if something bad happens or something doesn't come through like I thought it would, it's not a bad thing. If it, 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 that just means that wasn't for me, and that may have been for somebody else. Wow. That's somebody else's blessing. And how could I have to be mad at something being someone else's blessing? You know what I mean? Mm. So aside, aside from praying and um. Uh, I read a lot. Okay. I watch a lot of anime. <laughs> anime head. Like, I watch, like, if you know how you go to Hulu and Netflix, yep. and you like, it says suggested. Uh-huh. All my suggested shit is anime, literally. Like, there's <laughs> not <laughs> What's your favorite series? Okay. What are your favorite anime series? Oh, don't do this to me. Okay, A Comedy Got Kill is amazing. Okay. Attack on Titan. Uh, Inuyasha is, like, my favorite, favorite, favorite of, like, all time. It's the first one that hooked me into the anime. Okay. There's so many that I watch, like, everything. Naruto, um, My Hero Academy. I could go on. I got you. Now, now interesting, does anime, does it influence any of the music or any of the concepts that you see in that? (laughs) Is there any tie over it all or or not really? Well, you know, I I, I really love anime because of how creative they are. Mm. Like, they have anime about everything. Playing basketball, like, you name it. uh, Food cooking anime like it and it's real realistic it's crazy mm. but i love the creativity that is there and i feel like a lot of times with cartoons we have here um it's very one track mm. and it's not very it's not super creative and i like to say like on the rim of create creativity like all the way on the edge just so i can do- i can go as far as i want or i can dial it back as i need to but i just love the stories they tell and the, the way I don't know. I just love it. It, it keeps my mind open, and I love to have an open mind because that's the best way to be a writer, or the best writer, or the best artist. Because that means I can reach more people because I have an open mind, and I'm not judgmental. I'm not just one track. I'm not very like you know. It's kind of like a well-roundedness <laughs> that you know I think is um really really cool. You talked earlier about being a part of the Compton Project, Dre's project, which is is super special. Were you actually in the studio with him during that time period? Yeah. Um. The, actually, the first song, the first song that I did, he did a, like a, so many songs for that project. Mm. I mean, when you work with Dre, you just gotta know you're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of songs because he, you know, he wants the best of the best of the best, and I, I learned a lot from him for sure. But the very first song I did with him was just another day mm. featuring the game mm. in the studio that night, and it was crazy because. The game and him hadn't like really been they hadn't been speaking. Mm. So at this point, he was letting him come in and talk to him for the first time, and he was like, and, and, and game wanted to play some of his new music for him. So I was like, Yo, should I leave? And he was like, No, 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 I'll stay. Everybody stay. <laughs> Like, I was nervous. I was like, man, I don't know what's about to happen. Right. But I'm here. He came in. He played this um, song. He played his songs, and then they chopped it up. And then, and, and, you know, it became back to that whole love feeling, which I love about Dre. He's very peaceful and all about that love. So mm. and then he was like, you know what? I want to play something. So Dre played it, and game was like bobbing his head or whatever. He was like, yo, we got way too many talented motherfuckers in this room right now to not make a hit. Mm. Literally, what he said, and 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 Dre pointed at all of us, and he was like, "All right, shit, I'm about to spit on it now." And then I literally what had a hook like within less than five minutes wow. of them doing that whole thing. Like mm. I wrote the hook, and um, Game was writing, and then Game said his verse, and just it just so happens that what I was saying in the hook matched what he was saying in the verse, and I hadn't heard the verse. Mm. That's magical. So it was like a whole magical moment. Like, how yeah. did this even happen? How do we even end up on the same subject? <laughs> and it's just like a testament to how the universe works. So, <clears throat> Jane put his stuff down. <clears throat> excuse me. 
gang laid his stuff. And um, I was like, yo, I got a hook. Dre was like, lay it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Just Another Day became an uh, actual situation. It's actually the only song off the Compton album that made it into the Straight Outta Compton movie. Wow. Absolutely. So, it, it was crazy. Is there anything that you took from, from your experiences um, working with Dre that you apply to now, um, you know, your own music? Of course. Um, you know, just being 100% authentically you and making sure the message that you're trying to send in your music is of you. And, you know, just being a perfectionist. And and, and then even even while being a perfectionist, knowing that there's something magical about rawness and not being perfect in music. Mm. Sometimes, like, I've seen you know, like a lot of auto-tune that people put on all of their, their stuff, and they sound so perfect, but I feel like sometimes that takes away the emotion. Wow. Sometimes you want to hear that little cry in my voice. Sometimes you want to hear fall off the note into another one. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> sometimes certain things that you can mess that up. Right. So, I apply that a lot when I make my music, um, especially for me. Uh-huh. When I'm doing demos, okay, I turn the auto-tune on, let me just do this real quick and play this <clears throat> and send this off. But if right. I'm doing my own music, I'm going to be 100% authentic. Wow. Whatever that looks like. I love that. Final few questions for you, and I really thank you so much for taking out the time to, you know, just be so open and candid with me today about everything. What's something that you know now that you didn't know at the beginning of your career? Who I was. Mm. When, I, when I first started music, like I said, I was 15, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was a pop. I was like, doing, like, pop, pop. I was doing all types of stuff. And I was with a, a label, and they kind of were trying to morph me into something that I wasn't and that's no shade against them mm-hmm. at all they, they were just trying to find my sound as well you know and when you're dealing with a child how are you supposed to find out what their sound is supposed to be if they don't even know who they are i just think that's the difference in who i was as an artist asia bryant and who i am as an artist as asian it even shows in the name asia is a made-up name so mm. that was made up <laughs> so that was a contrived artist that was a built artist you know what I mean? But mm. now I'm just me. And, I, and I'm very unapologetic about it. Like, take me as who I am. If you like my music, cool. If you don't, cool. I appreciate you listening anyway. Oh. But this is me. And this is this is what I have to give to the to the world and to the universe. And I feel like through things that I've been through, mm. in the way I'm able to portray that in my music, I'm helping my, I help myself heal. And I'm helping other people heal as well. And I feel like you need a lot of love and healing in the world. So that's always my goal when I'm making something. My goal in music that I make is to make you feel. Feel whatever that is. I don't like to make mundane music that doesn't make you feel anything. I want to make you think like, oh my God, I've been through this or I'm going through this or dang, I don't know when I felt this way or like, dang, I didn't even know I felt this way. Mm. I can't tell you how many times I get DMs and messages from people like, yo, I didn't even know I still had these feelings. So mm. I didn't even know, like, people write me all the time, like, you got me through a breakup, or, you know, this one girl wrote me and she was like, yo, me and my ex have broke up for like three years, and then I realized that I still was in love with him, and we're getting married, and, you know, your music brought me to this place where I was able to accept how I felt and really give it another chance. And I was just like, man, this is amazing. This is what I do it for. Like, it ain't really for any of the other stuff. It's just for that. Because I just want everybody to be happy wow. and have love in their life, whatever that looks like. Yeah. That's, that's my ultimate goal with my music in general. It's fantastic that that's your intention for it. And it definitely, um, it definitely shines through knowing that it is that's the reason why you do it what are your like upcoming goals or what you're working on what's kind of you know in the near future for you that you're excited about and what's kind of keeping you you know amped up every day i'm amped up about dropping my album my very first album oh. ever oh. i've dropped eps but i've never dropped an album and it's so fitting that this album is is coming out you know when I'm in a space where I know exactly who I'm in, I'm, I'm very happy, I'm at peace, you know, I'm just creatively flourishing, like this is perfect. So I'm really excited for Love Train to come out. I have a single like you that's actually, actually dropping. Can you it? I don't know if I can say the date yet. Okay. But it's coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. Coming soon. 
Okay. It's like in the next few weeks. Okay. The next single's coming, and it's a bop. It's such a vibe. It's wow. such that R and B make you feel good, make you want to dance. Like, ugh, it's so good. So I'm, I'm really excited. Those are the things I have coming, um, coming up. It's you know my single, my album, um, touring, um, and I'm really excited about that because I love being on stage. It's like my favorite place. What is it? Performing's your favorite part. I'm like a whole other person on stage. Mm. Huh? What is it about the stage that, you know, that, that, that has made it your favorite part of, you know, this whole game? It's, it's weird because, you know, we t- I, I'm talking about authenticity when, you know, when I'm creating music. But when I feel like when you're on stage, you almost become like an actor, mm. well, you know, for me. Because I have to transport myself back into a time where I felt that way. So when I'm delivering the song to the audience, they can feel how I felt in that moment. Mm. You know what I mean? And I feel like there's just something so special about it. And there's something so so special about it. When I'm singing and everybody's singing, my words back at me. That's mm. crazy. Yeah. It's like intense. Mm. <laughs> it's like there's something, something so magical about being in front of people, being, not being able to reach out and touch them. You know what I mean? And be like, thank you for listening. Thank you for singing along with me. Thank you for writing with me. There's just something magical about congregating and bringing groups of people together who would never be together in a regular situation just because they like your music. You know, like, that's dope to me. And the fact that, you know, you kind of identified that is really cool because then you're able to, you know, capitalize off of all of those moments in, in every time and really live in the moment with that. So that's really special. Exactly. Thank you so much again for chatting with me. This is uh, I really enjoyed you know getting the chance to get to know you a little bit more and um, and and just hear about you know what goes on behind and within you know you know your mind and um, you know you sharing that. So I uh, thank you so much. No, thank you for having me. It was dope. I like talking and getting to know people and people who you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so can you just you know say where we can find you at and where you know audiences can find you at and you know all of that good stuff? I'm on all social media as I am Azian and Azian is spelled A S I A H N. So think of Asia like the continent mm-hmm. and add an H N at the end. Gotcha. Very easy. Okay. I am Azian. Um, I'm on all streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Amazon, Google Play. Wow. Well, not me, you can just search ASEAN and you'll find me. Wow. And, and, and ASEAN, you're working with uh, with Key? I am. Key is dope. I'm manager. Nice. And how, how, how has that been? I think Key's, Key's such a fantastic person. How has that been? It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's like when we bring two unicorns together mm. and we have a unicorn bar. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it sounds really cheesy, but I'm kind of a cheesy nigga. It's okay. But, <laughs> um, again, authenticity. Authentic people. Find yeah. authentic people. They mean what they say. They say what they mean in the music industry. Who's honest, who aren't trying to take advantage of you, who aren't just trying to, you know, use you for what you can make for them, but who actually believes in what you're doing, who actually believes in the message you're trying to spread. Mm. Like, to find that in a manager is very far in between in the industry. So I feel very blessed that I was able to come across Key and we were able to connect and she was able to listen to my music and then just really get into it and, you know, know each other and, like, really vibe on that level. Like, it's dope. And she's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Just the 80s thing with it. Ab- here. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I, I love the new movement. I um I saw her about a month ago. She came to. I'm, I live in the D.C. area, and she came here for for a chat. And I've known her for like a few years, but afterwards, we we um we all went out to dinner with a few folks, and really just to kind of you know hear her vision and and hear about what she's been building with since the '80s, and then you know it turned out that you're you know one of the artists that she's working with. I was like, oh, you know, that makes a lot of sense. So that's you know that's really cool. <laughs> bringing that authentic music back that just makes you feel something yeah. it's real like deep in it needed I oh. feel like absolutely absolutely and, and we look forward to you being one of the you know, one of the people in the forefront for that um, and definitely looking out for the you know the new single and uh, you know and the new project you said Love Train 2 Love Train 2 and the next single is called Like You Like You very good very good